Good morning and welcome to Quilt Chat. We're coming to you live from the AQS studio here in Paducah, Kentucky. And boy, do we have a lot of things to talk about today. We have some fun things to talk about. I sure know. Do. We're going to talk about creativity. Good. And it's yeah. there are so many different ways that quilters can be creative, whether it's with their quilts or not. Or not. All right. Well, yeah. Betsy, tell us about what you're working on that's creative. Well, right now, today, on the AQSblog.com, we are talking all about totes. And so we're having a big tote survey, and we'd love for you guys to participate. We have the link in the description um, for the quilt chat, and you can take part in the survey. But some of the early results are already in, and one of the most surprising things to me is that the totes, purses, and bags, 95% of our responders have made one. Wow. Oh, I don't doubt it because... So quilters, that's that's a common thing. If you quilt, right. you've, you've most likely made a bag, a purse, or a tote. Well, and it. in today's world where they're making totes to take to the grocery store... Oh, yes. You know, that's probably causing away. a lot of people True. to get involved in it. Yes. Absolutely. And 60% of the quilters have made one and given it away. Mm -hmm. So that means you've made more than one. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> and the most important part, can you guess? The most important part of any purse, tote, or bag, pockets. survey says, is pockets. 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 You're right. <laughs> and so pockets is overwhelmingly number so one, their you, most important thing they want in there. You can leave out the zipper, but be sure right. you have pockets. Be sure you have <laughs> lots of really handy pockets. And um, we also have, if you want to get started on a tote, we have seven patterns available for terrific yeah. totes and two wonderful member ones that go with that. So you can find those in the member only oh, area. Oh, yes. They, from they're the great. AQ magazine. Yes. And tell us how they get access to that if they want the member patterns. They go to AmericanQuilter.com and they click on the members only tab okay. and uh, they can go directly to all of the member patterns once they log in. And then, yes, they log in and if they don't remember their password, like many of us couldn't yes. when, when you <laughs> ask about that, um, uh, but you can always say, need my password right. and change it, oh, it right. so they can get in. Yeah. That's right. So. And if you have a lot of trouble, you can always call the, our customer service department. Yes, at 270-898-7903. <laughs> yes. And they'll always give you good help. That's right. They're so sweet. Yeah. Well, now, Anne, I know you're working on some stuff that relates to being creative. Well, I'm uh, working creatively, I hope, <laughs> on the next issue of AQ. I just wanted to mention, I brought along a copy of the March issue, which you probably just got in your uh, mailbox, or maybe you're seeing it at the uh, store, wherever you get your magazines. In this particular issue, we have a really nice article by Beth Ann Nemish. Now, you know Beth Ann from her very detailed quilts uh, and wall hangings that you may see in the magazine or at the shows, but we have an example of her first quilt, which she says, she claims the, the sides of this look like a potato chip, which um, oh, i got to say, maybe they do wave just a little bit. But you know, we all started with something <laughs> traditional. And that's exactly her point. Mm -hmm. She says, uh, you know, you start somewhere and keep track of where you've been. Don't, yeah. don't just hold back and wait to do it later when you get better. Just go ahead and do it. So you have kind of document your your quilting life through the actual quilts. If she were to make this quilt today, it wouldn't look anything no, like that. No, it would look it would look much more like uh, one of her later quilts that we have another picture of, uh, that is just absolutely beautiful, detailed um, seashore. And her quilting is picture. marvelous. And she it does is. all of her own yes. designs for her quilts she too. She does. So they're truly one of a kind pieces. And she talks about using uh, bits of your life. That's what she did on, on that particular one. She, um, it was her children that she depicted there on the seashore. So you can go from, from one stage to the next. And uh, she, she very uh, nicely shows us how or tells us how her path her creative path was in the article named Walk a Creative Path. So. Okay, all right. Now, Bonnie, I think you've been pretty creative <laughs> yourself I think you've been, lately. Like, dancing yeah. on that creative you, path. Girl. You, win, <laughs> you win the creative prize for this week, for sure. Well, you know, we're having uh, an upcycled fashion show that will benefit the Conklin Center in Daytona Beach. 
And I just really felt like, you know, somebody from AQS ought to do something. Well, that somebody turned out to be me. And so You're such I'm, a good volunteer, Bonnie. Oh, yeah. I get, <laughs> I, I get volunteered, too, you know. Um, but, you know, we have aisle banners, and we change those from time to time. And so I asked Troy uh, Holzhauser to bring me a couple aisle banners, and I'd see what I could do. And I was thinking raincoat, rain cape. And so I went on Pinterest and I found this design and I will tell you who did it. It was by Emily Lee Mandry and the pattern itself was in the summer 2015 Stitch Magazine. Okay. So once I found it, then I went and, and downloaded and paid for the magazine so that I'd have all the instructions. Um, and so what I didn't really know was that all of this vinyl is two layers because they're they're front and back so when we put mm -hmm. them up on the aisles you can see the numbers and the design right. from both sides right. well drew our our uh, graphic artist told me this morning that this was 18 gauge oh. vinyl yeah so if somebody's not really realizing it, these are the actual commercial weight heavy banners they are that hang at our shows and so about uh, 300 inches later of uh, binding <laughs> and a reverse um, a reversible uh, no not reversible Two -sided? separating Separated. open a zipper yes. um, and all of the seams are French seams, so you sew the seams wrong sides together first and then turn them right side over. Well, I don't know about you, Betsy, but I'm thinking overachiever here. Yes. <laughs> Not yes. so sure, but you know. But she's well, never going to get wet again. But you know what? <laughs> you have to problem solve as you go That's through right. this because I couldn't get this seam flat, so I ended up taking a table knife and, and sliding it underneath that so that I could bend it over the edge of the knife oh, to be right. able to do the, the second half of the seam. But believe me, no rain <laughs> that is, is coming through this at all. <laughs> okay, and so this is, um, this is an item that I'm going to be modeling at the fashion show there in Daytona Beach. The upcycling Beach, show. The right. upcycle fashion show. And, um, and so it took a lot of binding, and so today I'm going to show you how easy it is to make bias binding. I know some Good. people don't like that, so we're just going to get rid of this. It'll probably make a big plop on the floor because it's really heavy. <laughs> and now I lost half my props here. And so I actually worked with a 30-inch square to make the, the binding that I needed for the cape. Uh, but I reduced that down to 12 inches so that I could just go through the process and show exactly what I did. And so this is a 12 inch square and you'll notice that I have marked opposite sides with an X and an O and then I creased it in half. Can we, can we pull these away oh, so that they okay. can see better? Okay. I think I'll take them. All right. Being black, it was kind of blending into the rest. All right, so we'll just open this up. Because this is really important. The, 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 the reason for the X and O's is those are going to be the sides that you sew together eventually. Mm -hmm. okay. okay? And so I've pressed this, and then you would cut that in half. And so now we have two halves, and I'll put them back in the same orientation so that you can see. And so now I'm going to pick up the X piece here and here, and I'm going to sew them together. And they're going to overlap at the edges a quarter of an inch on both sides. Okay? All right, I've sewed one. And so now you have this parallelogram. And again, if you want to know which sides are the edges that are straight, again, it's where I marked O's, that's all mm -hmm. that's left. The X's are already sewn together. And at this point, you can do one of two things. I have marked, and for this, I just did it an inch and a half. I actually cut it for that two inches. Um, and so you can actually cut these strips and then put them together. Mm -hmm. But if you want to make a Continuous. tube, mm -hmm. a tube, all right, so you can see now that I'm going to pick up these two sides and and this becomes really awkward because, again, they're going to overlap. While you're sewing, it's really awkward. 
so that you line up those edges. If I could hang on to them, that would be good, huh? All right, and so you will sew there, and so then it will now become a tube. All right, now, let me just show you the little secret that I use because I had to cut so many inches of this that I decided that if I put this mat on my ironing board, I can slide my tube over it, and now I can just use my rotary cutter and cut two inch strips. Oh, creative. And so if you have yes. to make a lot of it, that's really one of those things that, that's a tip that you want to keep track of because that was really, really helpful. And at about 11 o'clock last night, it was really helpful. And so <laughs> here's what my binding looked like. And the first thing I did was I ironed it in half, wrong sides together. Then I ironed both sides to the center. So you had your guideline of the pressed line going down the center. I did, right. and, and, or you could run this through uh, like a clover bias maker, would do the mm -hmm. same thing. And then when that happens, you've already got that crease in the center that goes right over the edge of the cape. And I did just one stitching. Normally when you're doing binding, you might sew to the back first or to the front first and then flip it over. I did it, I was only gonna go around that one time. <laughs> <laughs> and so that's what I did. So that's, that was our binding, so. Well, Bonnie, I know you couldn't pin to that vinyl. So how did you secure your binding? on the cape in order to get it sewn oh, gosh, I didn't, nice and straight. I didn't bring those both any together, of those. So she did one. I Nimble wish fingers. Could, I wish you could have seen it when I had all of it clipped. I used the little clips. The so Wonder clips? clips? The Wonder Clips oh, to wonderful. put it on. And I clipped the whole thing, and then I went and sewed. And I so that, that idea. way you can just pull off a couple clips at a time, hang on to it, and sew. Now, I will tell you, I used a bigger needle because this was very strong. I bent one needle. Uh, to the point did. that I couldn't even thread my machine. Um, and so it, it, it certainly was a challenge, uh, but I like the way it turned out and you're I can't wait. Oh, you're gonna make Ann and I matching ones, right? Not out of that. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe out of something else. Well, and you know what? The design, if you were making it out of a, a lighter weight fabric, it would go to very, together very quickly. All you have is a back piece that's cut on the fold, two front pieces, Mm -hmm. and a hood that you cut two of. Right. And really if, if you were doing it, I probably would maybe do it out of maybe a, a clothing vinyl. Mm -hmm. um, sure, and then a softer. I, and then I might put a lightweight lining on the inside. Now I can tell you, this thing is hotter than There's the a, Dickens. You don't need to do you. When I wear this for the fashion show, I won't put it on until the last minute because it's warm. Now the designs, the way that you sh that you chose to place the designs are outstanding. It's really great because the back, you saw the front, the back looks entirely different and it's, it's gorgeous. So you'll have to wait until the Daytona Beach show at the charity event to see what Bonnie has done. Oh, and I have to tell you, I have to thank Alan because he was in here the other day at lunch when I was getting ready to cut everything out. And so between the two of us, we figured out, okay, we had this orangey <laughs> design and we had this blue design and how are we gonna cut it? And, and so I couldn't have cut it without Alan, believe me. Now, another thing that we're gonna have at that fashion show is a, an auction, silent auction of handmade jewelry. And so I have some pieces here on the table. Uh, these are, I did some uh, Zen Tangled Zen Gem jewelry and Betsy, maybe you can hold up one of those. And then Mindy, um, that works here in our office, she's been doing some really fun quilling designs. And so she's done a necklace and a variety of earrings. Those are so pretty. And so uh, that'll be a silent auction that goes on right. while we're at the fashion show. And we all know that quilters do love to quilt, but they love to do some other things as well. So. These are all kind They're of related, very creative people. Relative, related creative things to do. Yes. And this too will benefit the Conklin Center there in Daytona Wonderful. Beach. Now we have a really pretty quilt hanging behind us today. And we chose this one because I used bias both for the piping and for the binding on this quilt. Mm -hmm. And um, one of the things I like about using bias binding is that I just think it lays better on your quilt. It, goes, if, it curves. Yes. Well, well, I needed it. I needed it for the curve on that cape. But even on a straight, I just think it just lays nice on your quilt. 
if you don't have, if you use the straight of the grain and don't have that true straight, sometimes you get those little ripples in your binding and that's what would mm -hmm. cause that. Mm -hmm. Yes, it has so. grace. It, it helps you with grace. Well, one of the things that you uh, need to make sure that you do if you're coming to Daytona Beach is the show book just arrived. I mean, I can almost smell the ink right. on this. They're yet. still warm. <laughs> yes. Uh, and so this is free with your paid show admission. And so pick it up because this is the Bible to everything. And if you're at home and wanted it in advance, you can go to quiltweek.com and click on the Daytona Beach show and you can download it before you ever get there. So you can get the vendor maps mm -hmm. and plot your time. Yeah, Look planning at, is, yes. is essential. That's right. Cover Mark everything. the classes you've registered for. I mm -hmm. mean, they can get all of that planning done. Before and they where the food them. court is. That's right. That's <laughs> and right. the vendors that you love. That's right. So um, next week, we will be coming live from the Daytona Beach Quilt, uh, quilt Show. Quilt Wonderful. Week. <laughs> quilt week. We have quilt chat, quilt show, quilt week. It's hard to keep track. <laughs> we uh, love quilts. Uh, but <laughs> we we'll do. be coming live. Alan and I'll be there and uh, we'll try to pick some people that we think that you'd like to listen to and give you some information on what's going on there in Daytona Beach. Well, we can't wait to see it. Yeah, right. Ann and I really look forward to those weeks. I know because you don't <laughs> have to do it. <laughs> And Alan and I at, at quarter to 11 are thinking, okay, where's our guest, right? <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll see you next week from Daytona Beach. Thank you so much. Bye.